Starship Simulator has seen a massive success already. The new and upcoming space exploration game has now been funded to a tune of £400,000. It's an impressive amount of money. The question now then is what is next for the game? Where is it heading and what will it include? With an initial planned release date of March 2025, the game will continue to develop after that date, adding a selection of additional features. So here's a look at what a few of those will be. The big one, of course, is planetary landing. This feature will allow players to engage more deeply with the theme of space exploration, providing an immersive experience as a pilot shuttles from their orbiting starship down to explore diverse planetary surfaces. Now, the way that this is going to work is that players will initiate their descent by navigating to the flight deck that's on their uh, starship to access their shuttle. The process involves a controlled piloting sequence toward the planet, then transitioning through a brief loading phase designed for a seamless experience. So yes, there will be a small loading screen there, but they're aiming at keeping that as short as possible. Then once through that loading screen, you're about to pilot the shuttle around the surface of the planet and look for a location to land. Once landed, the procedural generated surfaces are open for exploration, allowing the players to disembark the shuttle and physically walk on the alien terrain. To return, players reverse the procedure, re-entering orbit and docking back into the Starship's shuttle bay. Now, in terms of the environmental design, the game utilizes procedural generation techniques to ensure consistency and diversity. Now, that means that there should be a decent number of planetary surfaces, although the developers have said this is perhaps going to be the part that is the bigger challenge for them, ensuring they have enough assets in the pool for the procedural generation to keep up with the variety. Now, each planet's environment is generated from a seed that also influences the appearance from orbit, ensuring that the player's expectations match the exploration experience. That means that the planet you see from orbit should match the surface of the planet. To set expectations accordingly though, planetary landings are designed as a temporary exploration rather than opportunities for settlement. The Starship acts as a mobile base. This is your main hub, this is the main area of the game, and that means there won't be any need for base building on planets. That's not going to be happening. However, the game plans to include expansions that allow interactions with settlements throughout the galaxy, which will eventually enable trading and support other activities. Another important caveat here is high-tech planets. This is planets where, well, I guess a little bit like Earth of today and planets far more advanced than Earth. Planets which will have advanced civilizations with urban environments and cities. To main gameplay quality and manage technical performance and just make this all manageable, planets such as this will have restricted landing capabilities. You won't be able to land absolutely everywhere on high-tech planets. Players can only land in designated zones to manage the complex details of well, what would actually be present otherwise. It would be far too complex to actually manage. Now, the devs have also been very keen to stress that walking on planets is not essential. It's an either-or option. You can both explore space as well as planets, or you can simply choose to ignore planetary surfaces, in which case players can employ probes for remote sampling or, uh, well, taking things, collecting things from the ground surface. So yes, it's all about exploration and discovery. You can do that on foot, or you can do it from the ship with using probes and sending them down to the surface on your behalf. Now, the fact that the game is using Unreal Engine 5, it means that the uh, engine's procedural content generation tools can be used to a great effect. The developers have said that the toolset enables various different biomes to be used across planets. So planets, planetary surfaces, planetary landings, look as though it's going to be a pretty big feature of Starship Simulator, but by no means should it be considered a primary focus or the main feature of the sim, but something nonetheless that I'm sure a lot of people are looking forward to. Now moving on, another thing that the sim is going to have is the ability to create customized star systems. In order to do this then, Starship Simulator will have in-game tools that tap into the same algorithms used for its procedural generations. From the main menu, players can select a star class, which not only determines the distance from Sol, but also influences where in the galaxy their system will reside. Then, as players place their first planet, the tool smartly restricts planet types based on their proximity to the star. That's the local star, their local sun. And this ensures a realistic astrophysical environment. For instance, an ice giant cannot survive in the scorching proximity of a nearby star. 
players can tweak the planet's appearance in real time, adjust its geological features and decide if it sports majestic rings. What's a planet without a story? Here, players can insert their own lore to give each celestial body a backstory, or let the game generate its own. Now, the customization extends beyond just astral bodies, and this will include ultimately the very life forms that may inhabit them. The alien race design tool is intended to be a robust feature, the devs say, which will allow for intricate control over physical attributes, societal structures, and a technological prowess of new species. Whether creating sentient blobs or regal cat-like beings, players can adjust everything from skin type to societal norms. Now, the tool not only will not only um, cover aesthetics, but the idea is that it will also extend to the technology and spacecraft of these alien races, with a variety of designs and styles at the player's fingertips. This part of the tool will work like a dedicated character customization system then, giving that life to the player's imagination. Now, the only thing here that I think is a potential downside to many people is the fact it seems that these two features, that is planetary design, star system design, as well as um, alien design, seem to be limited to certain tiers of backers. That's the uh, Captain Backer for, for, for £50 would have access to the ability to create star systems, whilst the Commodore Backer, that's up to £100 and beyond, will have the ability to create both planetary star systems as well as the alien races. All creations will be then submitted to the developers in a queue for review and approval and eventual inclusion in the game itself. What's not entirely clear to me is whether or not you can customise your own version of the game if you intend to play only in offline mode. Or whether, regardless of whether you're wanting to play online or offline, you still need to submit your creations for approval. Either way, this is a very nice feature with a lot of potential. Now moving on to the third thing I want to talk about is ship-to-ship -ship combat. Now to be very, very clear here, Starship Simulator is a game primarily focused on exploration. But nonetheless, combat can happen, particularly when encountering aggressive alien species. To enhance combat mechanics, the developers are going to introduce a tactical combat training mode, and this will be accessible through a multiplayer menu. This mode pits two non-FTL, that's none faster than light military vessels against each other, with the objective to disable and board the opponent's ship, ultimately capturing its bridge. Players can join this mode as a single player or as preformed teams and face off against other players or even NPC crews. Now, the goal is that eventually the combat training mode will support various team sizes ranging from 5 versus 5 to 20 versus 20. Also, the idea is that matches will take place in procedurally generated space environments, such as planetary orbits, uh, orbits rather, asteroid fields or near black holes. And this should ensure a level of variety and different settings for each play, play through each game and each match. Now, matches will start with the ships out of weapons range and progress to ships disabling and boarding each other. This will be the disabling and boarding phase. Boarding actions occur within the ship's corridors and rooms, with incapacitated players respawning in their respective medbays. A match concludes when a team holds the opponent's bridge for 60 seconds. The game will also feature a diverse approach to alien encounters, which hopefully will promote peaceful interactions through diplomacy with most species, while maintaining an element of danger with hostile species that warn players in, uh, intruding into their own space, so combat can and will happen. Now, to be very clear here, the developers have said that this is not going to be full-on arcade frantic combat. The combat instead is going to be designed to be tactical and slow, so it will avoid unrealistic space battles and focus on realism with subsystem level damage simulation instead of a traditional health bar. So there we have it. Look at some of the features that are going to be coming to Starship Simulator in addition to the base game. The developers then certainly have a lot of work ahead of them, very much looking forward to seeing where all this goes. Do check out the other videos on the screen right here, and I'll catch you next time. Take care.